Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Innal hamdalillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla la wa may yudlil fala hadiya la ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu usikum wa iyaya awlan bitaqullah faqad faza almuttaqun Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh All praise due to Allah Almighty the creator of all things the sender of all prophets the revealer of all truth May the mercy and blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of us who are present today, especially to the organizing committee of Peace Conference and to our beloved brother Yusuf Chamber as a chairperson, to all the scholars who have gathered here to share their knowledge with all the family in Oslo. And we are informed that they are brothers and a family who came from Denmark or maybe some who came from Holland. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our trip a trip that benefit all of us here and hereafter. On the behalf of me, my wife and my jama'ah from Malaysia, the brothers and sisters from Malaysia Al-Qadim convey their warm salam to all the brothers and sisters in Oslo. We hope one day, inshallah, we will meet in Malaysia. The topic that I was been informed that I would like to share with all the brothers and sisters today is the beauty of our deen. The beauty of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Al-yawmu akmaltu lakum deenakum. Watmamtu alaykum ni'mati waraditu lakum al-islam deena. To understand the beauty of this religion, brothers and sisters, you must have the knowledge. Without proper knowledge, no one will appreciate the beauty of Islam. There is no doubt that Islam is a beautiful religion, a religion that combines everyone. A religion that teaches us how to be loving, caring, and sharing with each other. A religion that acknowledges every single human being that live on this planet. Muslim, not yet Muslim, everyone is being recognized by this religion. A religion that protects the right of every individual. Allah said, today, 1,400 years ago, more than 1,400 years ago, Allah himself said, Today, I have perfected my religion for you. The beauty of something is when the thing that we want is something is being perfected for us. The beauty of a house, if the house is being perfected by the builder. And Allah said, and we have completed our favor upon all of you. This religion is a perfect religion. And whatever we need in this world, to the hereafter, everything is being completed by Almighty Allah, the Creator. The Creator, the All-Knowing, the All-Seeing, the All-Powerful, the Provider, Ar-Razzaq. 
Now what Allah is telling us, brothers and sisters, The only way of life that Allah chose, that Allah accepted, is only Islam. Now what do we understand about the beauty of this religion? Number one, in life, no one can live in this world without a religion. No one. Even a free thinker, even a communist, a socialist, you can just name it any ism, nobody can survive in this world without a religion. When we talk about religion, a lot of people are very confused today. Even Muslims are confused. And it also made people who are not yet Muslim more confused. If anyone will ask us, what is religion? What will be our answer, brothers? Can somebody help me? If anyone asks us, what is religion? What will be our answer? What will be our answer, brothers? To make it easy for everybody to simplify the meaning of religion, the word ad-deen means the do and the don't. There is no one who can survive in this world without a do and don't. Every single soul have a do and don't. But what is the difference between deen Allah wa deenul insan? Do and don't from human and the do and don't that is divine from God. The difference between Islam and other religion is other religion human hand have made some changes involved in the do and don't. Islam belong to Allah and Allah's do and don't is divine and it will last forever, anywhere, anytime. The first thing that Islam emphasizes in life is every single soul must know who is the one who created them. The importance of knowing who is your father, who is your mother, and it's so important to know who is the creator of the universe. The knowledge of knowing God in Islam is called Ilmu Tawheed. Ilmu Ma'rifatullah, the knowledge to know the true God. The God of Adam, the God of Noah, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Ismail, the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, God of Jesus, and the God of Muhammad, and the God that created every one of us is Allah. This is what all the messenger of Allah was sent to remind the people about the true God. There is no problem for people to believe in the true God. But the second thing that we have to know after knowing one God, we must know what do that particular God want us to do and what he said no. The do and don't. There is the sharia. Living in this world, brothers and sisters, if something people have perfected it for all of us, something that is so complete, I don't think we need to look to the west or east, left or right, we just look into what is been perfected and completed by Allah Almighty to all of us. And Allah who created all of us know that as a human, we need to have a balanced development. The development of the soul 
the development of the body and the development of the mind. Today, most of the organic shop have a logo, have letters B M S. It's a universal word that they use in all organic shop. B M S, meaning this food, the organic food, even it is. More expensive than normal food, but is good for the body, mind, and soul. And Islam believe that without a balanced development, no one will understand the beauty of religion. When you talk about the soul, we talk about the knowledge of God. To understand who is the true God and what is His name, it's easy to believe in one God. But do we know the name of the God that we believe and the one who created all of us, want us to call Him Allah? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. This is what we always recite. All praise due to Allah, the creator, the provider, and the sustainer of the world. He created all of us. Whether you accept him or not, it's up to you to choose. It's up to you to decide. But he is our creator. And Allah knows what we need in this life. Our soul need some food, and that's why Allah put the Sharia. That is divided into four category. To show you the beauty of this religion, number one is ibadah, act of worship, how to perform prayer. Now you try to understand, brother and sister, when Allah said, "Akimu salat." Establish your prayer. See how perfect this religion is, and how complete Islam is. When Allah want you to pray, He do not just leave it to you. Pray as you like. No. He choose the time for you to pray. He fix the time, not according to your time, my time. No. Allah said, "Inna salata kana ala al-mu'minin kitaban mawkuta." Indeed, the time of prayer was fixed by Allah to the believers, and the rakaat of prayer. How many times you should pray per day as a believer? He fixed it five times. How many times, brothers? Five. How many rakat you should perform your prayer in Fajr, the morning prayer, Zohar, the noon prayer, Asar, Maghrib, and Isha? Allah fix it for you. Two, four. Where's the number of the rakat? Two, four, four, three, four. This is the number that belong to Allah. Two, four. Four, three, four. He fixed the rakah. Now, if you ask any other than Islam, you just ask any other believers, whether Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism, or you just name it. Do you worship God? Do your religion teach you to worship God? Yes. How do you worship that God? It's up to us. How many times a day? Up to us. When to worship Him? Up to us. Everything up to them. They don't have an answer because it's not perfect religion. That religion is not been perfected yet, and that is why they do not know the proper way, the proper time, like Islam. Allahu Akbar. 
Even when you look in the book, in the gospel of Mark, Matthew, and Luke, in Christianity, it's mentioned that Jesus prostrate to God. Jesus prostrate, sujud. But you never see any people who believe in Jesus prostrate. None of them prostrate. They just sit down, they stand up, they don't go for bowing and sujud. Neither Hinduism, neither Buddhism, except Islam. Until today, every Muslim prostrate to Allah. If you ask the Christian, the Hindus and the Buddhists, do your religion teach you to fast? Yes, they have fasting. And you ask them, how many days do you fast in a year? Up to you. When do you start to fast? Up to you. How do you fast? Up to you. Everything is up to you. Some fast, they abstain from solid food, but they drink. They are still fasting. They only fast from taking solid food. How many hours do you fast? Up to you. Three hours, seven hours, ten hours, twenty-four hours. When do you start? When do you break? Up to you. <laughs> this word, up to you. Is a very popular word among all other religions. Because it's not perfect. It's not been completed. But you see in Islam, Allahu Akbar. When Allah said, I want you to fast in Ramadan. Kutiba alaykum siyam. Allah choose the man. You cannot fast this man. You can. The sunnah. The fart no. You cannot say, inshallah, next year, 2013, the Muslim in Norway is going to select one fasting man. When? Maybe when winter comes. When the day is short and the night is long. You can do that. But that fast will not be accepted by Allah. Whether it's summer or winter, what is important, the month has been fixed. Allah choose Ramadan. How many days Allah fixed? Not more than 30, not less than 29. When do you start fasting and when do you break your fast? It's from Fajr to Maghrib. Everything has been fixed. This is how perfect Islam is. This is how complete Islam is. That you don't find in any other religion anymore. I was a Buddhist, I know about Buddhism. I was a Christian, I know what the Bible said about this. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows That we need once in your lifetime to understand the beauty of Islam through the unity of mankind. There is Hajj, pilgrimage in Makkah. Once in a lifetime. See how beautiful Islam is. If Allah said, Every year is an obligation to the Muslim in the world to perform Hajj. What is going to happen in Makkah and Medina? If now you have more than one billion Muslim and one billion must go to Makkah, what is going to happen? Only Allah knows. But Allah make Hajj once in your lifetime. An obligation. Not every year, because Hajj is something to do with human movement. 
getting together and outing that you never experienced before in your lifetime. Where millions of people will overnight under Thousand Stars Hotel. Have you seen Thousand Stars Hotel before? Have you heard about Thousand Stars Hotel? No, the maximum seven stars. Seven stars. But you will be surprised to see in Mecca when you perform Hajj. Millions of people, black, white, Arab, non-Arab, rich and poor, young and old, male and female, all sleep in Muzdalifa. Where thousand star is above you. Allahu Akbar. The biggest camp in the world. It's a beauty. It's a beautiful. MashaAllah. Last few years, when we were making our mubit in Muzalifa, a lot of people do some photographing. And after that, when they print out the photos, you can see strange object floating on the air. Very unique. It's like there are some alien also together with the Muslim. It's Allah's blessing. It's been proven. We do not know where do this object yeah, came from. It just yeah, exists in the photos. This is the beauty of Islam. Everybody live like what Buna just shared with us his poem. Slave. We are all servant and slave of one God. To be a slave to one God do not make us a lesser human but make us a perfect human. A human who knows who is his God. A person who knows who is his master and he serve the God who have given him all the things that he needs in this world. The eye that can see, the ear that can hear, and all the faculty that Allah has given us. The only obligation that Allah fixed for the Muslim to do every day without fail is the shahada, the first pillar of Islam, and the salah, five times a day. Something that you can do it by yourself at any place, at any time. No money involved. You don't have to spend even one penny. Free of trust. Water free, everything free. That's when there's no excuse for the Muslims to say, I have no time for God. God, the Almighty King of all kings, loves to talk to us. He wants us to see Him five times a day. It is a great blessing. It's a great enigma. How do you feel, brother and sister, if the king or the queen want to see you five times a day? Can you say to the queen, I'm sorry, queen. I'm busy. I have no time. How do you feel if the president of a country say, come and see me five times a day. Please, I'm, I'm more busy than you. You are not grateful anymore. And Almighty Allah who know what we need. Our body need to have some exercise. Prayer is a form of exercise that can enhance the energy, the health that you need in this world. And Allah knows that you need to have willpower to have control to yourself. He wants you to fast. So that you have willpower and you know that I am in control to my desire, not my desire control me. Everything that Allah wants us to do is for our own good. And anything that He forbids us is also for our own benefit. 
nothing for him. After you have done what you must do as an individual to God, Allah show you, guide you to another area, mu'amalat. Your responsibility towards the society, the community, your neighbor, your responsibility towards education, you must love education. You must love knowledge because knowledge is power, knowledge is light. A lot of misunderstanding that took place today is because of our own ignorance toward each other. We fight for no reason. Greediness, power crazy. This is not knowledge. Pure knowledge is a knowledge that will bring benefit to you and to me. To everybody, to the environment, not to destroy. And also you must know that it is your responsibility to take good care of the environment, about health, education, about economy, about development. Everything is in mu'amalat. We need to have all this and Allah has perfected it for all of us. And as a human, we don't want to live forever as a bachelor. How many brothers who are here who are not yet married, please raise up your hand. Not married yet. Not married, not married. Alhamdulillah. How many sisters not married? Come on, come on. Alhamdulillah. This is a good place, you know. This is a good place. This is a good area for you to come. This gathering is a blessed gathering. A gathering for us to talk about God. About Allah. About our future. We are not here to talk about politics. We are not here to talk about people. We are talking about God. About Islam. Alhamdulillah, now we have seen so many hands here and so many hands behind. Alhamdulillah. Now Allah who created us, He knows our needs. And that's why our Prophet said, An-nikah sunnati Faman ragiba an sunnati falaysa minni Marriage is my sunnah. Whoever go against marriage is not my ummah. So you cannot say, I hate marriage. No. He said, Why are you not married? Because I'm still waiting. But don't wait for too long. Khatija, when she came to know that Muhammad her salesman is a very honest man, sincere man, a man of his word, a man with good conduct. Immediately, she sent somebody to ask for his hand. What do we learn from that, sisters? If you find any good brother here, don't wait for him. Get somebody to get his number and SMS. <laughs> There's so many ways to communicate with each other now. Don't be shy. For good purpose, why are we shying off? Think that is bad, you should be shy. Think that is good, just grab it. Good men don't always come to see us. Don't go to the pub and look for a pious man. Don't do that. You won't get. You get pious people in this kind of gathering. Alhamdulillah. All the brother who came, they are very pious brother. They are righteous brother. Even they are not right, they will be right after this. Inshallah. All the sisters who came here, they are good sisters. 
They'll be a good wife, they'll be a good mother, inshallah. Do we have a match uh, making arrangement today? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. This is how perfect Islam is. Islam is here to respond to our nature. It's not a religion that goes against our nature. Islam is here to remind us that you need to have a family. Islam never encouraged or endorsed free mixing. Because if you go for free, 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 there's no value. Everything free. Later on, you got free virus. You get free AIDS. Everything is free. Islam is a religion that talk about responsibilities. The Prophet says, "Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyate." Every one of you is a leader, and you will be questioned by Allah about your leadership. How do you lead your life? What do you want? Yeah. In your future, do you want to have a good family? Look for a good partner. Insha'Allah. And men, how many men who are married here? Please raise up your hand. Alhamdulillah. Brothers, we want to be a good man. Do you like to be a good man? Alhamdulillah. Now listen to this saying of the Prophet. A good man is not a man that is being awarded as a good man by the mayor. No. A good man by the school. No. A good man by the imam. No. The Prophet said, Khairukum, khairukum li ahli wa ana khairu li ahli. The best man among the men are the man who is best to his wife. To who? To whom? To who? Wife. Only the wife have the right to say, this is a good man. Not other people. The endorsement from the wife is guaranteed by Allah. Normally the men are good outside with their friend, but not inside. That's why Islam recognized the nature, the need of us as a male and female, and you have the law of munakahat, marriage. How to get married, when to get married, when you are ready. Sisters, are you ready to get married? Those who have reached the age of 16, 17, 18, you are ready. Don't keep on waiting. No, no. I'm still young until 20. How about 20 years old? 20, I'm also young until 40. <laughs> then only when they get married. Why not you get married young? So that you have children in a young age. The children can play with you, you can play with them. And you have grandchildren, and you have great-great-grandchildren. Allahu Akbar. It's a ni'mah, it's a blessing. Do you know that if you can see your great-great-grandchildren, your great-grandchildren will be so proud of you. Islam is so beautiful. Respond to your needs, your rights. And when you want to get married, what did Islam always remind you about your right as a man and a woman and your responsibility as a man, as a woman? Fair and square. Allahu Akbar. In Japan, I've been traveling in and out in Japan because I'm responsible in doing da'wah activities in Japan. The men, Masha, they work like machine. Japanese men work like machine. 
When they get their salary, all their salary, they'll give it to the wife. Allahu Akbar. The wife is a treasurer, banker, the husband, worker, the wife, banker. <laughs> of course, Islam never said you should have to do that. No. But what is Islam? Islam is fair. What is yours is yours. What belongs to your wife belongs to your wife. After getting married, we have problem. Before married, I love you, you love me. <laughs> After married, I slap you, you slap me. <laughs> what can we do? We thought that this is the Mr. Right. After marriage, we say, I shouldn't have accepted it. Too late. It's too late. You got to live with it. But if you can't, you know that this is not good anymore. Because married, you want to have the comfort of your eyes. When you see him, he make you happy. He give you the peace of mind, peace of heart. When he see you, he felt so secure. And that's why the Prophet was reminded by Allah, Husband and wife relationship is like a garment to each other. Garment is the closest thing on our body. Very close. And alhamdulillah after married, if you can love each other like how you love each other before you get married. But normally men, before marriage, they have a lot to talk to their girlfriend. And the girlfriend just listen. Woman before marriage, they are good listener. But after marriage, the woman become a talker. <laughs> the man become a good listener. Why? Why? Why do we change so fast? Why not we share with each other? The Prophet used to share with his wife, help his wife in doing everything at home. Wal-mu'minun wal-mu'minat ba'duhum awliya uba. Allah said, male and female, husband and wife, they are helper, complement each other. They are companion to each other. Beautiful Islam. Even after you are not happy with each other, Islam show you a way out. Divorce, talaq, no problem. You start good, you end good. Why must you start something good, you end bad? Most of us have a bad ending. I don't know why. Do you know why? Anger. Shaitan. We entertain our desire. If you feel that that's not a good life to be together anymore. Alhamdulillah. Let's sit down, discuss. If we think that separation is the best for both parties, let us accept it with an open heart. Reda, reda, reda. Allah Akbar. Don't fight because of the children. Your children have nothing to do with our adult problem. You must teach your children to respect their father and their mother. Don't corrupt them. And your children will love both parties. And what did the Prophet say to the man? If you divorce your wife, if you stop the children seeing their mother, Allah will stop you seeing somebody that you love in the day of judgment. Be fair to them. They are the mother. Islam is beautiful. Protect the right of every individual. To the extent that Islam protects the right of the animals and environments. But a lot of Muslims are not aware of this. And not yet Muslims are very confused about Islam. It's because the beauty of Islam is being covered by Muslims who don't understand Islam. Islam is not just praying, fasting, zikr. But it's a complete way of life. 
teach you about the adapt between you and God. Teach you about your responsibility towards the prophet. Because the prophet loved all of us more than we love ourselves. Every single day he prayed to Allah to ask Allah to forgive our sins and to guide all of us. How many of us remember our prophet? And he remember us. To the extent when he was going to die, all the prophets, when they are going to die, time's up now, but give me another five minutes. The angel of death have no authority to come and pull their soul without their permission. Not our soul. Our soul, they don't ask for permission. If the angel of death will come and ask our permission, we will always say, I am not ready. Don't come to me. Come, 20 years time. But when the angel of death came to the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and tell him time's up, like what I was informed here, time's up. The prophet said, "You can pull my soul, but pull slowly." When I said stop, stop. So the angel of death started to pull the soul, and he felt the pain. He felt the pain. He suffered the pain. He called the angel to stop. And he prayed to Allah, Oh Allah, if this is the pain that all my people is going to go through when they die, gather all their pain and suffering and let me alone. Take it away. He feel for all of us. He care for all of us. His love to us is so great. More than how our mother and father love us. How can we forget this great man? Who are willing to take all the suffering that we are going to face for himself. But Allah do not answer his prayer. Every human will have to taste whatever they have committed in this world. They will be responsible. About our adab, our behavior, our conduct towards ourselves. If you love yourself, what did Allah say to you? If you love yourself, make sure you take only good food, not junk food. You take a lot of junk food, all of us, one day will become junkies, you dress like the junkies, your hair become junkies and punkies. And everybody, they forget about who are, who are they because they don't love themselves. And that's why Allah forbid all the things that is bad for you. Don't eat just any food because you want to be healthy. To be healthy, you must make sure you eat the right food. And that's why Allah said, Kulu mimma fil ardi halalan tayyiba. Eat and drink what is good and halal for you. But we don't care. Who to be blamed, brothers and sisters? Who to be blamed? None but ourselves. Time is up for me, but before I end, I want all the brothers and sisters, please follow me to recite this beautiful saying of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's beautiful. You just follow me. Now, how many Muslims here memorize the Quran? I give you another question. Do we love Allah? Yes. Do we love the Quran? Yes. How many of us have memorized Quran? 
Alhamdulillah. How many of us memorize Surah Al-Fatiha? Please raise your hand. Hand, hand, hand. Fatiha, Fatiha. Alhamdulillah. I never said, have you memorized the whole Quran? I say, how many have memorized Quran? Yes. Fatiha, yes. Alhamdulillah. Inna a'tayna, alhamdulillah. Qul huwallah, okay. Wal asri, okay. Qul anfala, okay. Oh, the short, short one, alhamdulillah. Because we have short life, you know. We all use short term now. All SMS also short, short. Everything short. Alhamdulillah. Do we love Prophet Muhammad? Alhamdulillah. How many of us have memorized one saying of Prophet Muhammad? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Now for those who have not memorized even one saying, you are in trouble. You have no right to say to the Prophet that I love you in the day of judgment when you don't even remember his saying. Now I want to share with you one saying. And I believe, and I inshallah guarantee all of you, if you follow me to recite three times, three times, you will memorize this hadith. Do you want this hadith? This hadith is a very beautiful hadith. Do you think you have to pay for this hadith? I got to fly from Malaysia to here. Cost me a lot. I got to be on the plane for 12 and a half hours from Malaysia to Amsterdam. If I ask each one to pay just 10. What, what, what currency here? Krona. You didn't prepare to pay for me. Is that too expensive? If I say, donate to the peace conference, is that too much for you? Not to me. Donate to the peace conference here. Can you do that, brother and sister? For the sake of Allah, for one hadith. Inshallah. Yeah? I know you are shy to say that. Oh, I don't bring money, Ustaz. Okay, no problem. Do you have a ring? Yes. Do you love the ring or you love Prophet Muhammad? I don't have a ring, I have a necklace. <laughs> I have a phone. No problem. They will collect everything is halal here. Now let us read this hadith together. La darar. Wala dirar. La darar. Wala dirar. La darar. Wala dirar. Repeat again. Just the brothers. Sisters. Alhamdulillah. See? I guarantee you three times after that you memorize. The meaning of this hadith the Prophet is saying, a Muslim is a person who will never do anything or say anything that cause harm to himself or herself. And the same goes to a Muslim will never do or say anything that cause harm to other people. Meaning, Muslim a peacemaker. Muslim a good people. So when the people say Muslim are bad, we say no. We are good people. Inshallah. May Allah bless us. May Allah guide us, brothers and sisters. That's all I can share with you for this round. And inshallah, when Q&A session, we will continue again. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaih Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh The question is Can you marry a practicing brother If your parents do not agree?
if they don't leave, give you the permission, but he is practicing, can you still marry him? The world is, yeah. The question from the sisters, if you have a choice of your own man, it so happened that your parents dislike him. So what should you do? Now, Islamically, the parents also have the right to say no to you if they have a good reason. After checking on the boy or the guy, they found that this man is not a good man. The Prophet ﷺ said, when you want to get married to anybody, both sides, male and female, there are four things that you will look at them. Their wealth, their beauty, their lineage, and their religion. The thing that the Prophet always remind us to be very careful is to make the right choice. Not following your feeling, but look at the conduct and the religion of your future partner. That is more important than their look, their wealth, or their lineage. So parents, if they find out that the future in-law is not a good person, they have the right not to like them. So I would say that is. Thing, this kind of thing can be discussed. It's open for discussion. If the guy is not good now, that make the parent dislike him, call the guy to become a better Muslim. Call him to become a good Muslim. And once he changed, we believe that the parents' feeling towards him also will start to change. And they'll be ready to accept him. Or go to the sheikh, you must have some scholar here, seek their advice. Because when a good guy come to you and your parents stop them, dislike them because they have no money, that is not a good sign. Because Allah promised us, if you marry for the sake of Allah, for the sake of Allah, even if you are poor, I will enrich you. Because risk belong to Allah not belong to people. Azakallah. Okay, we hope Allah will give you parents who understand you and we hope you make the right choice. Azakallah. I mean, I mean, Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. We've got a lot of questions coming in on the SMS regarding marriage, okay? Now, the speech tomorrow for Sheikh yep. is on marriage. So then the question and answers will be on marriage. Today is the beauty of Islam. <laughs> okay, but I know the Sheikh did talk a lot about marriage, but he does take, talk a lot about marriage, yeah? Because he loves to get the brothers and sisters together and get them married. And on that note, Islam Net marriage event coming soon. So, let's get the next question. I think we have a whole multitude of sisters. Do we have anything specific there? What do we do about lost prayers and fasting? Lost prayers and fasting. Is that really specific to them now? Okay, any sisters queuing up there want to ask a question? Yes or no? Yes or no, sisters? Who's coordinating over there? We have a question here. Okay, go. Living in a non-Muslim society where you have to take loans from the bank to buy houses, is it allowed to take uh, loans where you have to pay interest? Because there are some fatawa that we have heard from some shiuch that it is allowed to take loans with uh, small interest of with small interest because of the necessity. Could you please clarify, Sheikh? To all the brothers and sisters in Islam, we we are aware of the situation that the world is facing. Not only the Muslim, everyone is facing the same problem. When you want to have to own a house or to have a good car, you may not have the cash to buy a house or a car, so the bank will offer you loans. Yeah. Islamically, Allah knows best. And He knows what is good for us. And Allah do not want to burden us. 
illa wus'aha. Allah never want to burden us with things that is not good for us. And that's why taking loan and involved in riba, interest is haram in Islam. It's not easy for you to stay away from all these kind of loans today. I'm not saying just the Muslim, but the law of riba is been forbidden not only among Muslim, even among the people of the book. They forbid riba. Do you know that among the Jew, they don't practice riba. They came up with this system, but they do not practice this among themselves. They believe in helping each other. Those who have more help, the underprivileged, but they apply this system to other because they know that we are weak and they know that we depend on them. But when you believe in Allah, that He is the provider, and you try your best to do what you can, if you don't have the means to buy an expensive car, a car, give an example, a car is a car. It's just a transportation to bring you from one point to another point. If you can't get expensive, get a cheap car. It's still a transportation. Not necessary to go for expensive thing. Alhamdulillah. So far, Allah has been very kind to me. I never get involved in riba. I never get involved in riba at all. Alhamdulillah. I have the money, I buy. I don't have the money, I keep bit by bit. Whatever I can, I buy. I never get involved in any loan. Even many banks offer loan to me. I say, Alhamdulillah. Allah has been very kind to us. So we can free ourselves from all these loans. If we have faith in Allah, we are contented with what God has given us. And that's why the Prophet said, always compare yourself with the people who is lower than you, who are poorer than you. Don't compare yourself with people who are better than you. Then you are not contented. It never means that you cannot enjoy life if you have the mean, you're welcome to enjoy. If you want to get more reward, you got extra, you can lend it to your brother, to sister for the sake of Allah. And inshallah, Allah will help you when you help another brothers and sister for the sake of Allah. So, riba, of course, is haram. And there's no way a Muslim can say riba is okay. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Uh, do we have any uh, questions from the sisters? I think there's some sisters over there, yeah? Bismillah, sister, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. You, you said that Allah perfected His religion for us when Islam came. And my question is, why didn't He perfect it before? I'm sorry, sister. I, I think I have problem in hearing the question from the sister. Some brother, can you help me? Any brother who are clear? Yes. Can you repeat again, sister? Repeat again. You said uh, Allah perfected His religion for us with Islam. And my question is, why didn't He perfect it before? Earlier. She asked, you said that Allah perfected his religion with Islam. Why didn't he perfect it before? Before. Oh, before. We know that the early prophet was sent by Allah to a particular nation and tribe, not to humanity, not to all mankind. Like Moses, Jesus, they were sent to the lost ship of Israel. They are the Israeli prophet, not to other race. And other books, that's why you have the Torah, the Old Testament, and you have Psalm to David, and you have the New Testament, the Bible to Jesus. And you have the last testament, the Quran, to Prophet Muhammad. 
because the early one is not been perfected because Prophet Muhammad is going to come to perfect what is not been perfect earlier. The Quran will be, is, is here to complete whatever is not being complete by the early scripture. You understand that, sis? This is Allah's plan. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. And that's why Islam cover everything about your right towards God, your duty towards God, how do you worship Him, your duty towards the community, yeah, mu'amalat, the duty towards family, munakahat, the duty towards implementation of civil and criminal law, jinayat, everything covered in Islam. Yeah? There's no issue in our daily life that Islam do not cover. Because Islam is the last book. Quran is the last book. Muhammad is the seal of all prophets. No more prophet is going to come after him. No other scripture is going to be revealed after the Quran. And that's why Islam, Allah himself perfected. Because it's his last book. Zakallahu khair. Zakhala khair, Sheikh. Beautiful answer. And uh, do we have any? We have a brother? Yes, we have a brother. Okay, we have a brother. Go ahead. Bismillah. Bismillah. Okay. Um, if someone have an ugly picture of Islam, how can you give him a beautiful picture of Islam? If I understood it correctly, if someone have a bad picture about Islam, what can we do to, to give him a good it. picture about Islam? Correct, correct the mistake. Yeah. So basically what the, I think the brother is saying is a lot of people have a very, very bad image of Islam right now. How can we correct that? Hmm? Right? Uh, we are aware of a very popular saying, Al-Islam mahjubil muslimin, meaning the beauty of Islam is being covered by the ugly Muslim. So how do we uh, rectify this kind of feeling. Number one, we hope the Muslim will become good Muslim first. Because Allah has said, Kuntum khaira ummah, Muslim are the best nation. So we must prove to the people that we are the best people. Best in doing the good thing, best in cleanliness, best in discipline, yeah, best in almost everything in our family. Yeah, best in your service when you get involved in work. Everything that Allah wants you to do for the Muslim, it is our duty to show good example. Because our Prophet is the best example for all of us. Allah said, Indeed, in the life of Prophet Muhammad, they are very fine conduct for you to follow. And for the not yet Muslim, please, humbly, I would like to call upon people who are not yet Muslim. When you want to talk about Islam, please be fair to this religion. If you understand this religion, I don't think you have any bad feeling towards it. You have no way that you can have any bad comment. But if you want to say the Muslim are bad, I agree with you 100%. Because there are good, bad and ugly Muslims. Because Muslims are the people but not the teaching. My siblings, my sisters, my brothers sometimes, they used to tell me that the Islam is so and so and so. I said, please. Before you continue, I want you to make sh I want you to understand that there is a big difference between Islam and Muslim. If you understand Muslim are bad, I have no comment because it's true. Is that true, brother? Yeah. yeah. It's true. You you can see mm. this even in Oslo. Mm. But when you want to say Islam is bad, I disagree. I will say to my family, please read the book of Islam first before you want to say anything about Islam. Be fair to Islam. Because Islam is for you and for me. It's not only for the Muslim. It's not only for the Arabs or the Pakistani or the Somalia. Islam is for all. That's why Islam stands for I shall love all mankind. 
is a region of love, a region of mercy, region of forgiveness. So the best way is, brother, we Muslim must start to change and follow the teaching of Islam. Not only in our dressing, but our character, the way we deal with our neighbor, our friend, the way we talk to people, the way we talk to people who are not yet Muslim. That's why I use the term, brother, not yet Muslim, so that we are not just mental to say that you are a non-Muslim. Who are we to say that you are a non-Muslim? We have no right to say that he is a non-Muslim, she is a non-Muslim, until we have conveyed the truth to them, they know the truth, they purposely reject it. But majority of people do not know the truth. Neither we talk to them about Islam. And Allah used to call the people who do not know about the true teaching of Islam, Zalika bi annahum qawmun la ya'lamun. They are a people, a group of people who knows not. They are not rejecting yet. They just do not know. And who make them ignorant? We, because we don't even share with them what is Islam. We don't even know how to tell them the beauty of Islam. May Allah guide them. For the people who are not yet Muslim, may Allah guide all of us. Amen. And for the Muslim, please, yeah, please save your soul. Be a good Muslim before it's too late. If not, remember, brother, Allah said, if we do not want to change, we are stubborn, we just don't want to change. I don't care. I know Islam is good, but I don't care. This is me, okay? Allah said, Sayastabdil kawman gairakum. Allah will replace all of you. There will come a time, Allah will not want to look at us anymore. And Allah will send another group, another nation will replace us. We hope that we will not be replaced by anybody. And Allah said again, Inna Allah la yughayiruma bi qawmin hatta yughayiruma bi anfusihim. Allah will never change the situation of a person until he or herself start to change. May Allah help us to change. Amen. Zakhara khair, Sheikh. And we have quite a few, loads of questions coming about the marriage issue, as usual. Um, MashaAllah. Even though I just said don't send them, but we're getting even more now. So what we, we should do the opposite, isn't it? We work on the opposite. Send marriage questions, please. I'll get everything else, yeah? Okay, right. So uh, the next question, Sheikh, is what does, I mean, Islam say about human rights? Very briefly, I, you know. Human rights. Before the West championed human rights, 1,400 years ago, the Prophet have introduced the basic human rights in Islam. I share with you seven basic human rights. Just seven, the rest we can uh, learn further inshallah. Number one, haqqul haya, the right to live, whether male or female, whether the child is born handicapped, the right to live. Nobody has the right to kill any infants. Number two, haqqul karama, the right to be honored, male or female, young, yeah, whether you are ugly, you are beautiful, you have the right to be honored. Whether you are poor or rich, you have the right to be honored. Hakul karama, the second right. The third right. Hakul kasab, the right to be paid. If you work for it, you have the right to be paid. Do you know that Islam even provides the wife to have the right for pay or the right for an allowance if the wife decides to breastfeed the baby, your baby. If you don't want to breastfeed the baby, then the husband got to buy powder milk. He got to spend maybe product from New Zealand or Australia. He got to spend. So if the wife decides to breastfeed the baby, the wife has the right to ask special allowance from the husband so that she take more good food to produce more healthy milk for the baby. Hakul kasab, the right to be paid. Number four, hakul tamlik, the right to own property. Everyone has the right to own property. 
The male have the right, the female have the right, the children have the right. Number five, hakul ama, the right to work. We have the right to work. The only different thing that we must be selective for the woman, you must select the work that fit you as a woman. So that you do not abandon your duty as a wife and as a mother to your children. And then you have hakul haya, no, no, hakul khurriya means the right to choose. No parent can force their daughter to marry any guy that they do not want. You have the right to say no. Your silence means yes, sister, remember. When your parent decides to get you married with some guy, your silence means you approve. So you have the right to say, no, daddy. Say it. If the daddy forces you, you have the right to say it to the qadi, the one who's going to conduct the marriage. Because they will ask you. Because there is no marriage by force. There's no divorce by force. Hakr khurriya. How many haq? How many basic rights we talked just now? How many? Number one, the right to live. The right to be honored. The right to... To what? To be paid. The right to own property. The right to work. The right to choose. And the last one, the right to what? The right to what? Where is the last one? Anybody remember the last one? Property. Yes, boy. Huh? What is the last one? What do we need? As a human, what right do we need some more after the six right? Yeah, of course, the right to have a hakur Really good questions coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we have one question here. Never mind. I will share with you all later on. I keep that one as a secret. Yes. Uh, Sheikh, why did you accept Islam? Why? Why did you accept Islam? Why do I accept Islam? After knowing Islam. Why should not I accept Islam? Because Islam is the truth. It's a way of life. It's divine. It's practical. It's logic. It's rational. Islam is the answer to whatever problem that we need to live in this world. And Islam is for you here and for you in your hereafter. Anyone who learns about Islam and understands Islam I don't think they will not accept Islam. They are sure to accept Islam because our nature is that we love what is right. We love what is good. And we can't appreciate Islam today so easily because the Muslims don't show good example and the media is very unjust to the Muslim. All the good thing about Islam, the media do not cover. Anything negative happen by the Muslim, they highlight it. Yeah, like we are the number one evil, yeah? but only Allah knows. The more they talk bad about Islam, the more people are exposed to the beauty of Islam. We have a lot of brothers say, thanks to Mr. Bush of America. We came to love and understand Islam through him. <laughs> because they attack Islam and people want to know more about this religion and they found out the truth of Islam by themselves. So please, we hope that any politician who dislike this religion, please be fair to yourself. Learn about this religion. It will benefit everybody. Because Islam is for all.
May Allah bless us. May Allah guide us. That's why I accept Islam after knowing what is Islam. Zakhla Khair, Sheikh. Just an uh, end question, really. Um, let's say there's. Uh, I've seen a boy in the conference that I'm uh, seeing, and he's mashallah good. Alhamdulillah. What's the first step for me now, Sheikh? What can I do? And then the next question is why are the brothers and sisters separated? <laughs> In this why, conference. Why, <laughs> why are the brothers and sisters in the conference separated? I think you've just got <laughs> Okay, go for it. We're going to answer it tomorrow, Sheikh, shall we? Yeah. What do you think? A quick one, a quick one would be okay, I think. Yeah, I think uh, brother and sister is good. If you have the feeling, a good one, you, you, you can keep it very secretly first. Because we do not want if something negative come from the other party, then you feel shy. You know? So you can just ask somebody to ask on your behalf. If you still feel ashamed to do that, while we are around, come to us. We will help you. We will check with the brother and whether he is still single or there is an advance booking. <laughs> We do not know. The same goes to the sister. If the brother are so, alhamdulillah, attracted, then there's nothing wrong for you to check. But don't let her know who is the brother yet. Just check whether she is okay or is she, uh, she engaged. We do not know. Once she's engaged, you cannot do anything. It's haram for you to do, yeah, to come in between a, a girl who is engaged. No, engaged means he has been booked. Yeah? Uh, so anyhow, don't worry, inshallah. Anything that is good, don't be shy for the sake of Allah. Yeah? Inshallah, we will be here for two more days. You are shy with me? Yusuf Chamber is here. Uh, Fahad is here. No problem. There's a lot of people around here. They are ready to help you for the sake of Allah. Yeah? Zakallahu khair. Barakallahu feek, Sheikh. And that's a beautiful talk on a beautiful Islam and the beauty of Islam. Alhamdulillah. So we got that bit out of the way. Alhamdulillah. Zakallahu khair, Sheikh. You can okay. come and sit down now okay. and uh, relax. And I'm sure there's going to be lots and lots of entourages around the Sheikh now saying, what about this brother and about this sister and how can I approach? And is Sheikh is going to be busy now. Alhamdulillah, yeah. brother Yusuf. Jashambe, I think what we say is moving now. Alhamdulillah. Yeah? There's something that's moving around us now. The feeling, the good feeling is starting to develop. Alhamdulillah. We hope after this uh, conference, no, there are more new partner. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah. Don't forget the saying of the Prophet, La darar, wa la dirar. Again, La darar, wa la dirar. Last one, La darar. Wala dirar. Alhamdulillah.